Although I am involved with CADAC, the Center of ADHD Awareness Canada, the views and opinions expressed in this episode are those of the participants and do not reflect those of CADAC. And now, cue the music. This is the Impulsive Thinker Podcast, a show for high-achieving ADHD entrepreneurs. Together, we will inform and educate you about how to improve your self-awareness while developing systems, routines, and habits for conquering the entrepreneurial world. Here is your host, Andre Brisson. Hey there, it's Andre here with another interview episode for the Impulsive Thinker podcast, the podcast for the high-achieving ADHD entrepreneur. This episode is brought to you by CADAC, the Center of ADHD Awareness Canada. You can get more information and make a donation at www.cadac.ca. Today I have Eric Sobakin, uh, also known as Eric the Viking. He is a CPA from Victoria, British Columbia. He's an author and creator of the Accountant Success Formula, which is an executive level coaching program that he developed that allows CPA firms to update their business model. Eric, thanks for coming on. Hey, Andre, this is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks. Do uh, you want here, plug yourself here. What do you do? What's your background? And what's this uh, Accountant Success Formula? Before we get yeah. Started? I, I was going to say, you know, it, it was interesting because when I was listening to the intro, I'm going, boy, they're like Eric the Viking and he's an accountant. What the hell's going on here? Like, what's wrong with this guy? And so, you know, and I kind of went, yeah, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Or, you know, like there's it's almost a dichotomy. I'm I'm an accountant who plays in a heavy metal band. Um, <laughs> and so I, as I said, I, I you and I've talked about before. I, I kind of consider myself a recovering accountant. Right. Yeah. So I don't I don't practice accounting anymore. It's been 15 years since my last accounting gig, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Introduce myself that way. Um, but no, I, I'm a, I'm a professional accountant. I'm a chartered accountant by uh, the um, shall we call it the traditional or the uh, legacy designation. Um, and I did that for 26 years. I was in the grind for the first 18 years. I was in a traditional firm with multiple partners. That partnership imploded and I ended up going and starting my own firm and did it for eight, another eight years. And at that time, I actually triggered, uh, should we call it, triggered the demon inside. I actually triggered yeah. the the entrepreneur inside of me, which just went, this is garbage. I'm not going to work like this anymore. This is crap. And so for the next eight years, when I had my own accounting practice, I said, I'm not doing overtime anymore. I'm not doing timesheets. I'm going to do a totally different model. I'm going to deliver value that business owners really want. And so I tested and tried a whole bunch of different methodologies like an entrepreneur, and I found one that worked. And then, you know, eight years later, no overtime, superior profitability. I sold the practice and because something inside of me said I, I needed to do something else. And I was looking for a new career or a new uh, business to start. And I had a bunch of accountants asking me how the hell I did it. And next thing right. I know, I started coaching them. I have now an audio book. I got a I got a book. I've got an audio book. I've got an online course and I have an executive coaching program which shows accounting firms how to update their business model, which is ultimately a way for them to free themselves. It's a path to freedom. It's I, I the, my book the accountant success formula is called Freeing Today's Accountant from an Oppressive Business Model, which I believe anybody who's doing a billable hour model is like an oppressive model. It's stressful as hell. And biz and the customer doesn't like it either. So I've shown accounting firms how to update that model to give themselves freedom, deliver the value they want for their clients, and ultimately get their lives back. That sounds really good. So when you said Eric the Viking, what is wrong with me? Imagine that's immediately got me to thinking about even me in the engineering world is what's wrong with that person want to change things up and do diff do things differently. And yeah, I'm getting a yeah. lot of pushback and resistance in there oh yeah and then talking with you and except everything you just said there i think entrepreneurs in the professional world are oddballs and we're fighting an uphill battle all the time does that make sense to you oh yeah my uh, totally and it, it's it's interesting because one of my favorite definitions of a professional is uh, a technician having an entrepreneurial seizure Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And any, any, like I, I've said before, I said, I, I'm an entrepreneur stuck in an accountant's body. <laughs> like I'm really, I really am. And, and I realized that I was different even from the get go when I be, first became a partner in the accounting firm that I was in that first 18 year stint. 
I, I became a partner and instantly I, when I became a partner, I had the opportunity to maybe start calling the shots on a couple things. So the first thing I did, I was like, we got to change the logo of this company. It was like the old school script. It looked like yeah. a funeral home. Like it was like, come on, let's get, let's update, let's fresh, let's do things new. But I constantly had pushback, especially from accountants because they're just so steeped in tradition. I mean, the, there's the joke about accountants, I'm going to see if you can tie this in with engineers. It's like, why did the accountant cross the road? Why is that? Because they did it last year. I think that's true in all professions. They Not it's just professional. Doctors, yeah. doctors, Bingo. lawyers, everything. Um, and I like the term that you use, tradition. It's just traditional. I never put those two together in yeah. the professional world. It's just, that's what they always seem to do the same way. And for me, I was always the one... Uh, Challenging the status quo just because it was done like that last time doesn't necessarily mean it has to be done this time because something right. changed or if we can improve or for me, it was always the resistance of why upset the apple cart. It's been working like this for 400 years. Why should we look at it differently? Well, there's but there's the there's the question. And that's when I realized I'm an I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I look at it and go, but is it really working? Like, is it yeah. really working? Like you look at it and you go, yeah, it's been working in terms of it's predictable, which I think most professionals, that's why you go into the professions in the first place is because you want a solid career that's predictable and cash flow and I've got a salary and blah, blah, blah. The difference between that and an entrepreneur, entrepreneur is like, my income is going to go up one year, down another year, up one year, down another year. And I'm willing to take risks because I'm enjoying the creative process of creating more value in the world, bringing more out there. Um, you know, when I, um, so I, interesting story, I'll come back to the heavy metal. Cause I, I, I love heavy metal music, right? Like eighties metal, like some good, you know, Ozzy and, and some that five, you know, death. but some new stuff, some five finger death punch and disturbed. We, my band plays some of that too. I'm the lead singer and drummer in my band. And so, I had this opportunity when I was just at, coming out of grade 12, going into the first year of university, I had a guy, a bunch of group of guys come to me and say, Eric, we want you to come and play in our band. We have gigs lined up from Victoria, Seattle, down to Oregon coast, down all the way down to um, LA. We've got all the gigs lined up. We want you to be the drummer and singer and, and backup singer in the band. Come join us. And at that point I had to make a decision. I had to go, Hmm. Do I keep going to university to get my CA designation or do I go and follow my passion, which is music, to do that? Well, I chose accounting because I thought, well, I'll get the accounting degree. Then I'll have a solid job. I'll have a solid career. I'll make money and then I can start a band. And sure enough, I actually did it. So I started a band later. I had started a Motley Crue tribute band after I became a partner in that other firm. But that's yep. a whole another podcast, yep. right? Yeah. So like I think you said a few times now is um, I think... It's, uh, the other phrase I like to is, I'm not an engineer. You're not an accountant. Yeah. I'm an entrepreneur with a specialty in engineering. Yeah, which is which is our mutual coach, Dan Sullivan, right. brought to our attention through strategic coach, which was, no, you're not. You're, you're an entrepreneur with a specialty in something. But I found that if you were to go and I think if I was to go and do an actual uh, survey amongst accounting, professional accountants, they would they would we they would resist that they would no 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 i'm not an entrepreneur i serve entrepreneurs i do accounting work for entrepreneurs but i'm not an entrepreneur they they don't realize they actually running a company they're on to their business owners they're running a company correct they're business owners not an entrepreneur or what yeah. i call it, they don't have the entrepreneurial mindset they're just business owners or they own their job yeah. And, you know, come to, th you know, and when I look back on it, when I first started in the profession and any professional thing, you're just trying to learn your craft. You're trying to learn yeah. your technical skills and you're just following what the people in front of you did because you think that is the path to, that is the path to success. Cause that's what we're talking about being successful person. Using someone else's measuring stick. If I'm going to follow your path, then yeah. I'm successful to you. Yes, exactly. And, and so for me in the beginning, I was doing that. Like I, I did that in the beginning. Yeah. I don't know about yeah, you, we, but like well, we got to get our, all, we all have to get, get our, our license, jobs. right? We have get to our get our license. license. Get our yeah. yeah, yeah. So do that. But then eventually, I think, I, like uh, the monster inside me starts stirring, and I'm like getting, I'm getting restless, irritable, and disconnect, discontent. Right? You know, which is like another. <laughs> that's what we call in, in the recovery movement. I'm not only just a recovering accountant, I'm a recovering alcoholic too, right? So I mm. think I've got I've got that addiction inside me, but there's 
this restless, irritable, and disconnect discontent that happened inside me as I was in the profession. Cause I was like, there should be, we should be doing more here. Like accountants, apparently our business owners, number one trusted advisor. Okay, great. But when was the last time the business owner came and tasked the accountant about opening a new shop or expanding into yeah. this other area or how they're building their wealth? It's like this, this great skill set that accountants have is not being flourished. It's not growing. It's not being creative because the entire model, the entire, and I call this, is the oppressive business model, which has been pushed down by the profession, which is holding them back. Like it's holding them down. And so for me, I was like, no, 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 that this is garbage. I, I shouldn't have to do this. And so okay. that's, that's, but that's entrepreneurial thinking. Like just well, that's to come what back I was going to say. Like, I think if you're talking about the engineer, same way, I think it is oppressive. But I think it's only to the entrepreneurial mindset, not necessarily to everyone yeah. else who needs yes. to just who want to do their job. Just like I got a buddy in engineering. He it's a job for him. He goes in, does his work, goes home, very talented. He yeah. can do a lot of good engineering stuff in other companies, but he just works to golf. Right. There you go. There so you go. I guess it's also what I'm also hearing from you is a lot that I've been feeling is, yeah. And I thought engineering is trying to strangle me, and choke me, but yeah. I'm just different yeah. and we see it different. And the status quo, I've always challenged. How about you? Just because we did it this way last way, maybe we can effectively increase productivity, efficiency oh. to save money, uh, you know, yeah. waste of time can get rid of. Yeah. Like that drives me bananas wasting time. Oh. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So you're, 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 you're basically mirroring the conversation I had with Julia Waller yesterday. So I, you, you know, yeah. you and I both, you know, yeah, Julia. she's been Julia's, on the podcast quite a few times, but the unique ability. Julia has been, you, okay. So I've been doing a deep dive into my unique ability. And one of my top 10 uh, best habits that we did a deep dive on was status quo. And literally I had it in there, status quo. It's basically one of the lines in there is status quo is death. Yeah. yeah. It's death. And it's because it's not like, if it's working and producing the result we want, then it's not about crushing status quo. Then you become, and I could go down a totally political line here, then it just becomes changing the model just for the sake of changing the model. And I'm not interested in that. I'm only interested in going, is it giving me the result I want? And if it isn't giving me the result I want, or if there's a better result, for me, I'm very futuristic in my vision, Larry, yeah. because I'll look at it and I'll go, Oh, it could be so much greater. We could take this and move it over here and build it up over there. And then it becomes this bigger, brighter thing, which is the so, definition of an entrepreneur again, taking taking yeah. something from a lower level of productivity and bringing it to a higher level of So it sounds like your maximizers kicking off too to make something great. Oh, yeah. Zing, zing, yeah. Zing. yeah. Right. But but status quo, especially if it's brainwashing like i'll talk about this quite a bit in my in my program and to my audience it's like you've been brainwashed and they're like oh that's 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 kind of a you know especially to professionals like no i haven't i ha i haven't been brainwashed it's like yeah. i'm sorry we've all been brainwashed we've all been brainwashed through social media through uh groups of people and it doesn't have to be like you know the heinous word of brainwashing it's just your your thinking has been influenced by outside forces and I think for you and me, we both realized that we started feeling this restless, irritable discontent because we realized that we wanted to think independently. We wanted to think expansively and growing and how do we create more and better? That's the, and that's an entrepreneur. Yeah. That's an entrepreneur, yeah. right? Yeah. And then with you saying, I think the other thing too, is we were actually brainwashed into a scarcity mindset. Oh, my yeah. tools, my sandbox, stay away. I, and whatever I really observed, I thought it was just an engineering thing. Then I start observing with lawyers, doctors, even accountants, is they um, they don't like to work with each other, even within yeah. their own firms. Um, there's no collaboration. And I think that really throws them off when you got an entrepreneur with a specialty in accounting or engineering says, why can't we work together? I, like I go in, we're, we're competitors. Who cares? You got your specialty. I have mine. We yeah. can do this great for the client. No, no, we have to control it all. We're the best. We're, we're God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually, that's, so there, we're talking directly to the accountant success formula too. There's two principles I have in there. I believe that the, I believe that the accounting, the, the, the accounting profession is oppressive to the accountant and that it destroys their life and it takes away their three freedoms of money, clients, and time. I've been yeah. talking about this for a long time. These yeah. are the three freedoms that I have inside that. I says money, clients, and times. And we've been brainwashed into believing one, that our worth is equal to how many hours we work. 
Yeah. Two, that our clients are naturally price sensitive to our services. And three, that tax time just has to suck. Okay, so those are the three lies of, for the accountant. And underlying those three lies are the two fundamental flaws in the business model. Because I'm a business model guy. I always say, is the business model working? Billing by the hour is an oppressive model. And just banging out compliance tax returns instead of giving what the client really needs is an oppressive model because you're just being a compliance donkey. You're not creating value. You're not being entrepreneurial minded. You're And, and inside that compliance problem, if you start putting yourself in the position of the creator of creating opportunities and growing the client's life, and you'll love this, I come up with a four planning pillars process, which I said, it's like a house. If you envision a house has four pillars, right? Engineer will love this. So it's a yep. four, it's a house. You got four pillars holding up the house. And for every entrepreneur, they've got four plans that is creating this home, this life for themselves. It's called the business plan, the wealth plan, the retirement plan, and the estate plan. Those are the four pillars. And we know when you build something, it's only as strong as the weakest link. So each one of these pillars is connected to the other one, and it has to hold the roof up, roof up properly. Mm -hmm. But what happens is, is that we have, for the entrepreneur, we go back to the analogy, they have all these different sub trades working on the different parts of the house. You've got a lawyer over here, a financial advisor over there, a banker over there, a business advisor, all these different professionals, and they're not talking to one another. Worst of all, they don't have a blueprint to work from. There's no general contractor saying, this is what the house is supposed to look like. And right. then the electrician goes, oh yeah, okay, this is it. So imagine what your house would look like if you had the plumber, the electrician, the, the drywaller all just building the house the way they think of it. It would look like a mess and the house wouldn't be sturdy, mm -hmm. right? The engineers would be having a, they would be pulling a rain man in the corner going, it's not safe, it's not safe, yeah. right? But this is, so I talked to the accountants about, you have to communicate with the other professionals. It's not about the accountant doing all of those pillars, but we need to understand what we're building. And then to do that, we have to go, Here's my specialty in tax. Let's have a conversation with the lawyer and the financial advisor, the banker, the insurance person, and make sure we're all in alignment building the right house for the client, what the client really wants for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so this is that collaborative, non-protectionist area, right? And so I see this happening more and more in the professions, like the account, uh, the financial advisors are huge on this. Oh, we're going to put a fence around the client. We're going to, yeah. we're the, we're yeah. the quarterback. We put a fence around the client. I'm like, wow, that's really good. Cause you guys really yeah. suck at it. You, you suck at taxes, right? Like that's a good way of putting it. People actually, a lot of professionals seem to claim ownership of a client and we can't own the client. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. an interesting thing about it. We don't yeah. own them. And I think I've always no. done that. I don't own you. If no. someone else, another engineer can do a better job than I can on this, go to them. Yeah. And yeah. then, and, and the value is what a lot of people don't understand is, while a lot of people don't respect their own value out there, that's the other thing. Yes. And a lot of clients out there don't want, or like who the engineers or professionals are serving don't want value. They just want scarcity, cheap and going. Yeah. The, the, here's a, here's another concept for the listeners. And, and if this resonates, please just grab this and run with it. The scarcity mindset is, is all fear-based, right? So right. we're thinking, I have to know this. I have to, to deliver value. I have to let the client blah, 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 blah. And then you're afraid to take them outside of your bubble in case they find something better because yep. you're fearful that they're going to leave you. Instead, you shift the mindset and go, what is the definition, the true definition of a professional? And for me, I have this definition that I use all the time. I said, a professional knows what they don't know. That too. Professional knows what they don't know. A non-professional doesn't know what they don't know. And they're so dangerous. You got to run like hell because they don't realize there's a problem. So when I would go into a client situation, I'd look at the four planning pillars. I'd look at the blueprint. I go, okay, wait a second. Something's out of alignment here. What we're doing over here for tax is screwing up their wealth plan. And I know there's something going on in the wealth plan. And, and, and I know that I don't know exactly what the problem is, but I can smell it. I'm going to go to the financial advisor and say, hey, what's going on over here? How This is what I'm doing over here. Tell me what you're doing over there. And let's make sure it's not messing up. And then they're like, oh, crap. Yeah, that's right. I'm doing this technical thing because they have a deep knowledge of that. I don't. Yeah. So I was open to going, but I knew what I didn't know. And so when you know what you don't know, it's you are open to bringing collaborators in. Yep. 
Yeah. And then the other thing too, I just want to add to what professor like I like the fact that professionals know what they don't know, but at the same time too, I think professionals know what to do and they do what's right. And and what we're talking about is actually right. Yeah. Bringing in other specialists who know things better than us so that we get a better result for the client. So this is comes, I think this ties it all the way back down to entrepreneurial thinking too, Andre. Right. And 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 doing what's right is I want to bring the result for the client to a higher level of productivity. I can do that. I can only do that to the maximum degree. Let's be maximizers here. Yep. Is yep. if I'm bringing in the other specialists to work with me to create this, this new value, which means I can't be in a scarcity mindset. I have to be in an abundant mindset and going, I'm looking to create the best possible scenario and and bringing in other people outside so the best part is is for the listener is going you don't have to know everything actually it's impossible to know everything but then in an entrepreneurial mindset you're like okay but there are people out there who know more right. than me this is exciting let's go yeah. find them come them bring them together collaborate and let's create something new and, and greater like you and me when we talked we hit it off we're like yeah, yeah. man let's do the <laughs> podcast let's have some fun and you're like accountants okay great and i'm like yeah heavy metal account <laughs> oh you're you're no accountant you're no, not an I account know. and no. like the other thing too is for me i can't like people that, for an engineer say i don't know i'll figure it out for you later is also a weird thing to say out there and then what you just described there, my friend, is exactly why entrepreneurs in the professional world are oddballs. Yes. Right? People, yes. Other professionals see us as a threat. I've, they either yes. politic us out or do things or challenge us or really try hard because we're disrupting their apple cart. Like you mm -hmm. said before, it's because professionals, the profession, sorry, are steeped in tradition and they're yep. brainwashed into a scarcity mindset. Yep. And then, and I like how you did, and I want to finish off with this, that to be a true professional, and I believe this to my heart, and this is where everything is decided based on this fact. I know what I don't know, and I get yeah. others, and I always do what's right, even if it'll cost me money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because eventually it will come around and you will make more as a result of doing what's right. It's called karma. Right. So that's, to me, that's almost like a long-term investment. Yes. Yes. I'll take it right now, but it will come back. Go. When? We don't know. It's, right. it's surprising. That's the mystery. Wow, man, this was fantastic. I really enjoyed this conversation. Where can the listeners get a hold of you? Uh, oh, they can find me. Uh, I'm on. I'm the only social I do is LinkedIn, and that's it. I have no other social. I stay away from it. I'm allergic to social. I break out in. Um, I break out in bad attitude. Yep. So I, I'm on LinkedIn, Eric Solbacken, and on LinkedIn, or they can go to EricSolbackenCPA.com or the AccountantSuccessFormula.com. You can find me. All right. For my ADHD peeps there, there will be in the show notes for you. So it'll be easy to connect. <laughs> so thanks again, my friend. This was a fantastic conversation. And remember the listener, even though we are oddballs in our profession, let's add an ADHD in there. It is the reason the profession moves forward. And there are many clients out there looking for you. And I want you to answer this question for yourself is how do you stand out in your profession as the entrepreneur who has a specialty in insert profession. Thanks again for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Impulsive Thinker podcast. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion for the show, please visit theimpulsivethinker.com. The Impulsive Thinker podcast is produced by Tactical Breakthroughs and hosted by Andre Brisson. Remember, ADHD is only a part of you, not all of you.